Hey guys, what's going on? Andrew coming at you. I'm here with Dustin, who has a YouTube channel also. His YouTube channel is called Feekable, and he also is an American, and he talks about his experience in Sweden. And this is our my first time collaborating. I think it's your first time collaborating, too. I'm really excited about it. How are you doing today? Or tonight, I guess. Yeah, well, no, tonight is, uh, yeah, Saturday. Um, I uh, went over to my uh, office. Uh, I live in Lund. So uh, the kids are asleep, um, and so I had some time to get some work done and to do this little collab that we're talking about. Um, yeah, so yeah, and overall I'm doing well. Okay, so I have some questions for you, and the first question I have is, what brings you to what brings you to Sweden? Why are you in Sweden? It's the first question all of all of us ask, but I have to ask you. No, of course, uh, I've answered this question countless times here. Yeah. Um, well, how I always begin is I am a love migrant, I guess someone can say. <laughs> uh, I met my now wife uh, in Cairo, Egypt. We were both working there back in 2008. That's when we met. Um, eventually got married in 2012. So that was really cool. Um, yeah, so I met her. We were both there for three years in Cairo and then we decided that I wanted to continue my education, and I looked for some master's programs in Sweden. And cool fact, I was the last year of enrollment where non-European Union members were actually free to attend university. So I, I got in just under the deadline for that. Um, so that was fun. Moved to Lund in 2010, and then, yeah, that's why I'm here. It was originally to, yeah, do a master's. Great. And one thing I've noticed about uh, your channel, Fikabul, is that you always have, you, you prefer to talk in Swedish, which is a little bit different than what I do. And what, what made you start wanting to do that, uh, like talking in Swedish? And then like, how long have you been talking in Swedish? And how is it going with learning the language? Yeah, um, funny enough, I've never actually done videos in English. They've always been in a foreign language. So originally I was doing videos in Arabic. And then when I moved here, um, I was still kind of focusing on the Arabic. I was doing some lessons and teaching people uh, to, yeah, the Arabic language. But the reason I wanted to continue in Swedish is because, yeah, I was not very good at it. And I always love the fact that I can record myself and kind of see where I make mistakes and go back and correct them. Uh, so that's one reason. Um, and another is, I don't know, I just love the fact that I can talk to a whole group of people in a foreign language, at least try to. Obviously, I fail quite often. And yeah, just wanting to hear feedback, um, tips, some help as well. Um, and yeah, I guess not much else to say was really why I do it in Swedish, but mainly because, yeah, I've never done it in English. I feel more comfortable, actually. Actually, I feel like in, you know, they say you have multiple personalities and you speak multiple languages. And so, I know with Arabic, I'm a much more aggressive and angry sounding person in that language. And with Swedish, I guess you, yeah, you, you get, yeah, you have your own personality. And I know when I pick up the phone sometimes, if like a Swedish friend called my, my wife, and I pick up and I try to pretend to be uh, Swedish by starting in Swedish and getting into the language, and then they kind of get confused at first, because they usually don't hear me speak it. Um, so it's always fun to yeah see what I can do. You're always trying to expand on the language, especially if you're a language learner. And yeah, it's uh, it's fun because it, it never ends. That's why I like it. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's 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 fun hearing you say like different personalities because I think uh, I kind of speak when I speak Swedish. I kind of speak like more like higher tones when I speak Swedish. My my, my girlfriend will say it to me, and I found with learning Swedish that. Uh, there are so many times, and it just happened to me recently, where um, I'll be asked a question, and and I had that little mental pause of trying to figure out what someone else is going to say, and they switch to English, and I'll just have this like feeling of like defeat, or the, I used to have this like confusion where I just go, oh, oh, I don't, I don't know, and I'm finding more and more now I'll just say like uh, uh, Vasadu. Uh, I try more to like take that extra second or two to see if it clicks in my head what they're, what they're supposed to say. And I've found more and more with that pause it works. 
But even like now, as I feel like I get better, I still find those little moments. Like I think someone used a different word for, uh, I think the word for a bag is like imposa, but they said something different. It was like when I was at H&M and I just had like that slight confusion of what he said and then he automatically switched to English. So I still do with that a lot. Yeah, I know a good tip that I remember from trying to speak my first language, uh, my, first second, my first second language, I guess you say. And I love the, the motto, you fake it until you make it. And so, so still, even today, in Swedish, I'll just make the mm sounds and just let the conversation keep on going, even though I don't, I catch all the important words. I may not understand it fully. Um, and I'll try to repeat back. You kind of, you kind of mimic the language that they use just to kind of confirm if you understood correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I found when I'm in control of the conversation, it goes much more smooth, smoothly. So yeah, like you said, if it's someone else initiating the conversation, it just starts. You don't know where they're starting at. You don't know what to expect for the conversation. You have it in your head. Okay, these are the responses I've had in the past. Come at you. You're right. The yeah to. Yeah, to, to expect the language that typically comes back with the fun thing I like to keep in my mind, fake it till you make it in the language. Because um, then it forces them to continue on at least a little bit longer until they figure out you don't understand. So it's always a, those little steps of learning it went further and further. What was the biggest, like, what, when you came to Sweden, what was the biggest thing that hit you with, like, culture shock about, like, something being different in Sweden than in the States? What was the thing that hit you the most when you first came? Um, I guess the, the limited times, of uh, open times for different shops, that was uh, a lot different. I'd run to go pick up something from uh, a supermarket or uh I mean, uh, from Cairo, which is a city that never sleeps, um, here around 6 p.m., which is, yeah, it's nice. So that was probably the biggest uh, change I noticed at first. Um, as well as, I think, maybe the, the drinking culture here. Um, I, I never really did that in the States when I was at college, and I never did that in Egypt. Um, I think it, they don't really have such a wide variety of maybe alcoholic choices and things like that. Um, being a yeah, Islamic country, I mean, alcohol is available, you know, I mean, there's Christian shops that sell it and things like that. So, um, yeah, so that, I mean, that was a big change as well, the drinking culture as well. And, not, and I've always heard from maybe a few different Swedes, like, I was at my first, like, introduction at my master's program, and the first thing someone said to me, I was committing a cultural, like, faux pas, maybe, by being at a, a party without a drink in my hand. And so that was a funny little joke they started off with. I think for me, um, Sweden was like my first country. I went to Puerto Rico, so I know Puerto Rico is like a territory of the United States, but Sweden was the first. So to me, everything was so new, but the biggest culture shock for me, and this is the one I noticed when I go back to the States, I want to ask if you noticed this too, is the quiet of it all. Like I always say that like Sweden is like the most quiet place on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but then like Friday and Saturday night, it's a lot more loud and lively if you, you know, obviously if you go out and walk around or what you were talking about with the uh, drinking culture. But um, during the week, it's so quiet. Like even the dogs, I feel like are quiet. Like they don't seem to bark as much. And then I would find that when I would go back to the States, like as soon as I'm like in an airport and I just go to the first restaurant, I automatically just hear that English speakers, we speak more loud, and that I'm bombarded with televisions with information. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you have you gone through that same experience? Have you noticed that, or is that just me? Um, my limited, I think, the first thing that comes to my head after hearing you say that is TVs being in like in a, an apartment or at the home, not being on constantly. Um, I think maybe that just happens in the states. Maybe that's just how I grew up. I'm not sure. But it seems like the TV is always on in the background at home in the States. And here, oh, sorry, you disappeared for a second. Oh, I'm, I'm still here, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but here, it seems like when I first went to my, my wife's family house, like they would never turn the TV on until the evening. And it was always strange that I would go over there and be like, hey, can I turn the TV on at 3 in the afternoon? And they would be kind of like, yeah, I guess you could. So, but when it comes to the quietness, 
Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's nice. We live by a little like not a park, but kind of like a recreational area here in Lynn. And it's really nice having that around uh, the apartment because you can go out there. People are walking, doing little jobs and stuff like that. But yeah, it's very relaxing to be. Yeah. Have you ever? Have you ever, like for me, I just feel like no matter how long I'm here, like it felt like this year, as soon as the darkness started to hit, it's just, it's 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 so difficult for me. Like I, I, I try to go run and I try to work out, but I haven't found that it ever gets easier. And I was wondering for you, what your experience is like with the darkness, because I find that to be the hardest thing to get used to. It's strange with me because I maybe the... Uh the outsider when it comes to this because I, I like it being dark and I like it being cold. Okay. So if this well maybe it's because I, I start sweating quite easily. Okay. Like I get if I go out in the winter I just have like a t shirt and then my jacket because I don't need to bundle up. As soon as I start walking I just get overly warm. So I like the coldness of it. That's not a problem. Um, the darkness I think it's cozy. I've heard other sweets that like the winter because it can be cozy. You have your like niece dogs or whatever. Uh or the Miss Evenings. I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh, you mean uh, like a, what, like Fritas Miss? Is that what you're talking about? Like. Yeah, but maybe it's just more uh, comfortable or cozy at night. Like yeah, yeah. You have the pepper lights, you have the candles in the window. Yeah, yeah. You have things going on. So, I mean, if people appreciate that, I found some people that do appreciate that here, and I think I'm one of them. But I've also heard just as much that it's depressing and that it can cause a lot of emotional things going on in your head when it comes to not having that sunlight and it's very fun to hear the people that go to like the light therapy sessions during the winter times here i'm not sure if you've heard of that at all um but yeah I, I don't have a problem with it personally but yeah i can definitely understand it okay um what's what's the other thing i wanted to ask you um Oh, if, if you could just explain to everybody the scene behind you and, and a little bit about why what, what we're looking at behind us and what you're doing here in Sweden with this. Uh, that would be great. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I'm not at home. I'm at a little contour setup in the same city where I live. And this is kind of where I uh, run my business. I started about two years ago, um, which is also kind of why I wanted to start my YouTube channel here in Sweden, speaking in Swedish. We were talking about that a little bit earlier mm -hmm. uh, before we started recording, obviously. But uh, it's a place where I pack up a lot of different snacks and licorice products that I send out to people all over Sweden. And it's, a, it's a subscription service where people yeah, they sign up on the website, they can choose between healthy snacks or licorice products, and then every month they get surprised with an international selection of uh, yeah, licorice goodies and Tesla snacks on that case, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just full of uh, products right now because it's right smack in the middle of packing time. Mm -hmm. So all the products are on the shelves and they're all probably be sent out in the next few days. Great, fantastic. And what I can do then as well is I'll put a link to your channel below and I can put a link uh, to your company below as well if anyone wants to go and check that out. And hopefully I'll have a video right. out at some point soon where I get a chance to Show show people what's in the box and try some of the goodies because I'm always about the goodies. So that 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 sounds great. Uh, cool. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me? By chance. Well, I mean, I think I found you just like anyone else on YouTube, and so I always like to yeah find new vloggers and people talking honestly about their lives, and I think that's kind of what uh, attracted me to your your channel was the candid of how you spoke, the uh, the topics you discuss. It isn't necessarily an, an entertainment channel, which is great because when I go to my the vloggers and the people I watch on YouTube, it's always kind of great to get the insider's view of what's going on in a certain country they live in or what they truly think about things. And that's what I find refreshing about uh, your content. And I guess that leads up to my question for you. Um, how do you do it? How do you keep your your honest opinions in your videos without I guess restricting your comments or your, your I guess how do you just determine your uh, your videos like what goes through your head and what's your process of uh, determining what gets put up on YouTube well I always used to be somebody with kind of an 
an overactive mind. I always thought about things. I always felt like I think about things pretty deeply. And I, when I started my YouTube channel, I was afraid that I might run out of things to say. And I remember my girlfriend saying, like, I, I, I've known you for a long time. I don't think you're going to run out of things to say. <laughs> so yeah. what I started out doing was uploading music and, and other things I was into and just a few things about Sweden. And, and then I saw that those tended to get more views. And then so I did a couple more things just about Sweden to try it out. And that was when people started to write comments that were getting ready to travel uh, to Sweden. And then I was just so happy that I got some comments on my videos. So then I was like, okay, um, let me start answering some of their questions. And as I started to do that, um, more ideas came in my head. One was just Swedish pizza versus American pizza. It was just an excuse to eat pizza. So, so I tried that. And I guess uh, about kind of giving the honest experiences, the biggest thing I've noticed with having a YouTube channel is I've always been someone that has kind of like an underlying uh, amount of anxiety. I'm always a little bit afraid uh, of what people were, were going to think of me if, I, if I, I gave my opinion. And YouTube is in a way has kind of helped me get over that a little bit more and, and become like a little bit more comfortable with myself. And I realized that if I do talk about something that's not necessarily a right answer or wrong, I'll, I'll talk about something and make a mistake and someone will correct me in the comments. And But I always realized that it's always through you know my perspective, just like it is through everybody else. And the biggest thing with traveling really is, it's just taught me that there isn't necessarily like a right and a wrong way to do things. There's always just like another way to do something and there's another way to see something. Just the way I decide to to live my life or the way I see the world doesn't mean it's the right way to see the world. So when I try to give my, my views to others, it, it's kind of from that mindset that like, this is just the way I see things and you know, how do you see them? Or And that's kind of been the way I've gone about it on my channel. But I know you mentioned your, your American pizza versus Swedish pizza. And I, I always think about that as well. And I'm so happy now they've opened a Domino's here. In, okay. Uh, in Mama. And so now every time our family discusses whether or not we're going to have pizza tonight, I always make the effort to go down to Mama about a 20 minute drive and back to get the proper pizza, at least what I feel is a proper tasting pizza. Because um, I, know, I know they offer like pan style, American pan style pizza at some restaurants here. And it's always funny because it's not American pan pizza that they're offering at these Swedish uh, pizza shops. Um, Oh. Yeah, I feel like they, all they do is they, they double the thickness of the current dough that they're using. Okay. And they call it pan pizza. Um, so, yeah, if I do have to eat from a Swedish uh, pizza shop, it's always like the traditional crust. Um, the interesting thing with me about Swedish pizza is that they don't... I, I think Swedes actually prefer to cut their pizza, but that was like the biggest thing for me is like not having a... Uh, pizza cutter. So I have American friends here that just bring a pizza cutter from home. So once we get the pizza, we just go ahead and use the pizza cutter. But Swedes prefer yeah. to cut the pizza themselves, and they will cut it if you ask for it. But it's just kind of an interesting thing um, I've noticed. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Swedish dish or uh, Swedish food that you're really into that you enjoy? Goodness, um, I like the different uh, the sausages. I mean, maybe it's not a dish, but the fact that there's so many varieties of sausage that you can buy at the grocery store here. Now given, I can't tell the difference in flavor from many of the different sausages that I buy. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you can find a really good brand. And if, I like the, the spicy chorizo, um, scone branded uh, sausages. So those are always fun to yeah, mix up with different uh, soups or lentil. Uh, What's it called? Great. Um, what is that called? Like kind of like a stew. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably my favorite, especially now with the weather getting colder mm -hmm. and uh, darker earlier. It's always nice to have a nice steaming bowl of uh, stew to eat. Um, so I guess that would be my favorite. And my my wife makes a killer uh, like cider based stew. So it's quite sweet. You add apples to it, and you put some either beef or pork. Uh, uh, pieces of beef in there or pork, so that's kind of my favorite. The, the stew, you dip some bread in there, soaks up the juices. Mm. That's what I like. Cool. I, I feel like that's Swedish. Great. I have uh, one more question for you because this is one that I 
um, understand because I've dealt with this. Uh, what is, the, how do you deal with, or what do you find to be the most difficult thing about being away from home? So, like, first of all, what do you, what do you miss uh, about home? Like, what is something that like you just kind of crave? And I mean, do you ever get used to that? Because as as I'm sure you're aware, there's always a bit of a uh, a sacrifice when you do move to another country. And how do you deal yeah. with that? What have you experienced? Good question. Let me think. It's been 10 years now since I left the United States. The first uh, three years was in the Middle East, and then the latter seven have been here in Sweden. Um, but even before that, I moved states. I went from the north of the U.S. to the south. So I, I'm originally from Michigan, packed up, moved to Texas to do my university, and so I already felt like there was a big cultural change going on when I was 18. Um, so I think it all started there. But now when I think about not being home for 10 years, um, I think the hardest part now is now that my family is growing, me and my wife are having children, uh, I think it's the same for many people. Growing up with kids away from your close family is difficult. Um, but luckily, I think I talk to my family on Skype and other things more than I ever would if I was living in the States. So we talk more, I feel like, even though it's frustrating they can't interact with our kids as much as uh, I think they would like to. Um, I think that's the, probably the hardest part. Yeah, I, I, I deal with that too. Um, I find it so hard to see my family um, and I, I go through that. But the thing I struggle with is um, a lot of students that graduated with me in university uh, didn't end up maybe finding a job right away. And um, I look at myself before I left to Sweden because Sweden is my first country. And I know a few people that kind of just got stuck in a rut that couldn't get out of it necessarily when they were in the States. And for me, coming here by myself really kind of forced me to kind of grow up fast and mature uh, much faster. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of felt like I could have maybe made uh, bad mistakes at home or just not gotten out of my comfort zone kind of. So I found that like kind of forcing yourself out of your, out of your comfort zone, it, it helped me grow as a person and start making like positive decisions because let's say I make a mistake at home, you know, you, you have, I have maybe my mother or my father there that could help bail me out of a situation. But once, once you're abroad, once you're on your own, that's much more difficult and you become much more responsible in that sense. That's, that, that's, although it's the, it's, it's, it's hard to not see my family or it's, it's difficult when I don't see my family. Um, I think it's worth it for the overall life experience that I've gained at the same time. Yeah, no, that's a great, recap of what that does. I can definitely agree with maturity is forced when you leave your own country, for sure. Um, no, even... Try that. Yeah, yeah. Funny story, when I first left the States, I had moved to Syria. First time out of the country, first time experiencing anything traveling by myself. And I arrived in Damascus, Syria around 2 a.m. in the morning, and then I was trying to understand the language before I arrived, and I was determined not to get ripped off. That was like my main goal. I'm not going to get ripped off with uh, taxi drivers, bus drivers, or anything, the stores or whatever. So I had it all pre-planned out as much as I could, that from the airport, I'm not taking a taxi, I'm going to take the public bus. And so I found the little kiosk where they sold the bus tickets and uh, bought my ticket for like 20 cents or whatever it was at the time. Got there, they took me to the center of the city, and then I didn't know where I was. Because I, I didn't know what the bus routes were or anything. Um, but I knew the name of the, the hospital I was staying at, and in the end, I had to take a taxi from the center of town to my hospital, and I did overpay. Um, and I ended up booking the wrong night for the hospital, so they didn't have a room for me. So I was banging on this hospital door at 2 a.m., and they put me in this little nook behind the front office, because they didn't want to leave me out on the street. It was, yeah, almost 3 a.m. at this point. And 
yeah, that was my first experience leaving the States and having to figure things out on my own. Uh, waking up with uh, the sound of minarets going off in my ears behind the front office desk at a hospital. <laughs> have you have you gained a certain like trust or calm in yourself? Because when I first came to Sweden, it was uh, all my flights got delayed, and um, I ended up taking like a 36 hour flight. It was my first time flying on my own and everything else, and everything that kind of could go wrong did. Like my luggage got lost and everything else. Uh, but in a sense, it's made me much more calm when I travel because I feel like. Yeah, when you travel now, you just accept that things could go wrong, and when they do, you just kind of have to roll with it and not let it maybe. Like sometimes the bad things end up being a great experience. Like I got couldn't book a train one time when I was in Copenhagen, and I was supposed to meet up with my friends. Uh, we were we were heading to to Holland, and uh, even though I couldn't go, um, I ended up having to find a hostel, having to find a place to go. But ended up having a really great experience that day with a, a group of people that I had never met, and I wouldn't have never had that if I had that problem. Have you had those experiences as well, where you kind of find the silver lining yeah, think, in the experience? I think maybe we have a similar personality. I'm not sure if it was there before I started traveling more often or not, um, but more or less take things as they come. Uh, yeah, I, have, I think one of my best traits that I've been told is my patience ability to wait things out, have the, what do you call the, the long game in my head all the time. So never expecting, yeah, the easy route. And that's one thing I love about challenges. And that's one thing I always try to do is take the harder route, which I think kind of forced me to leave the States to go and try to study another language and to stay in that country and try to find a job and work there. Um, even though it's not the easiest choice, it's easier to yeah, maybe stay near your family, stay in your hometown, stay at a place where you can easily find a job because you're not the foreigner trying to find something mm -hmm. in the States. So I like challenges, so when something does happen, it always kind of makes me feel, let's say my train was delayed or it got canceled or my flight and I have to stay at a hotel in some strange city. I always take those moments and be like, well, this is a place to grow my patience and try to take advantage of the situation, I guess. Great. And I have one final question for you. And again, I thank you for doing this. I'm so, this has been so much fun for me to do this. And your camera looks way better than mine, by the way. Um, is what do you absolutely like love about Sweden? Like what's, if you had to pick something, what's like your favorite thing about Sweden? Because I'm sure a lot of people watching would want me to ask that. Yes. What I love about Sweden is a little bit of effort goes a long way, I feel like. Um, I guess I should try to explain that a bit more. Um, I guess it has more to do with, if you want to make something of yourself, um, and this goes into maybe a little bit of what we talked about before, mm -hmm. like what we can learn from each other. Um, what we can learn from the Swedish society and what maybe the Swedish society can learn from our American society. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's that pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality where don't rely on anyone else. If you have a dream, make it happen. And that passion that burns inside of someone to start a business or to learn a language or do something, I feel like maybe it's not easier here but I feel like you can really stand out. And whether or not that's a good or bad thing from being someone that's passionate, that someone maybe that talks too much or someone that has a loud voice, mm -hmm. um, that's something that gets brought up a lot in our household is that I have a very pronouncing voice and it always gets too loud. And I don't know. I like that you can put a little effort into your schoolwork or your master's degree or your idea of trying to start a business and maybe the American effort goes a long way here. Um, but when it comes to what I like about Sweden, when it comes to what's already here and what's great is, I'm hesitant to say that the nature, because I feel like everyone kind of falls back on that, because 70% mm -hmm. of Sweden is 
forest and nature areas. Um, I do love going out there. I do love finding new trails to walk and to jog on. Um, and I, I love that the all that all the man's rats or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. where, the law, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's nice to have as an option. If a weekend comes up and you have no destination to go to, you just hop on a train or a bus, get off in uh, some national forest or whatever, and you spend a day there, bring some pika. And yeah, you can just enjoy life a bit more. Great. I think for me, um, again, it would probably you know, say the same thing, nature. But when I think about what I love about Sweden is kind of that it goes, everything kind of goes at a little bit of a little slower pace in a sense. I find it to be uh, a calm country overall and kind of uh, relaxed. And, uh, and people just seem to be more calm in, in general. For example, getting a cup of coffee is... It's kind of relaxing, and for me in the states, I always felt like I was getting a cup of coffee and not in a rush somewhere. Or like coffee never seemed like I just sat down and relaxed. And so I really kind of enjoy the little bit of the slower speed of everything works, where people, um, you know, they they don't live the work they they work to live in a sense, I guess. Um, and I think the biggest thing americans can take away from sweets is kind of the the team mentality the, the thought of the the other man and the common man even though i say that though i mean americans are really generous when it comes to um giving the charity and things like that but i just mean like the team oriented like it's very important here that everybody agrees uh, on things that being said i have to agree with you uh with uh, i think the thing that people can learn here as well is is that it's okay to take charge of things sometimes and um, like you said a little bit of effort can go a long way um, and I, I think that's something that we gain from our our, 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 our our personalities come from from just being from the states as well um, so I think that that's the nice thing is that both societies and cultures can kind of benefit from each other because our our, our strengths are good although I mean the weakness could be if you if you care too much about yourself and where you're going you can lose sight of the other people that are also important as well in, in, from yeah. you know the American perspective, I guess. So. Yeah, no, it's good. Well, it seems like this definitely was a a great time to talk and a great um, way to get things out of our our minds that yeah. would, would never come out otherwise. So yeah. I really appreciate you doing this. It's really cool. Um, and maybe next time I can be the interviewer, so maybe your audience and your followers can know more about you. Um, because definitely, I wasn't, I hadn't prepared so many questions. I'm not sure if your uh, audience can tell that or not. But uh, <laughs> I definitely have them, and I definitely uh, would love to ask you in the future if you're ever up to it. Yeah, I think it'd be a great video, and like we talked about as well. I mean, I would love to hear more about what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, Dustin's YouTube channel, Feekable, in the description below. And can you just give another a plug to your own company as well? I'll put a link there below. I just want to make sure I say all the right things there. Yeah, quickly, um, yeah, Feekable, the name of the YouTube channel, um, was kind of to go in line with the company, which is kind of my food interest. Um, there isn't many right now about food. Right now it's kind of a daily uh, vlog uh, of me and my family traveling in the United States. Mm -hmm. And before that, you'll find some language videos in Arabic. But definitely stay tuned if any of you guys watching are interested in seeing more about my life here in Sweden uh, or just my topics of food that I will get into in the future. Um, again, the company that I'm working with is called uh, Housebox and Lockerit Storiet. Um, they're both at housebox.se and lockeritstoriet.se as well. So if you guys are interested in any type of uh, snacks or licorice products, head over there. Great. And if you're if you're on Feekable's channel and you're watching this because we're going to upload this on both our channels and you would like to subscribe to my channel or go check it out, um, I'm sure he'll put the link for my channel below as well and you're lucky to go there. I talk about Sweden and I, I sometimes have music videos and other things on there as well. Um, and I'm sure we yeah, will... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just for my follow real quick. Yeah. yeah. This is... Uh... Yes, you're, it's Andrew, your, your first and last name for your channel. Yeah, right? just Andrew Austin. Yeah, find me, and Andrew if you put Austin. the link below, that'd be good. 